Hello golfers, welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better, faster. Today we're gonna to talk about what everybody wants, more distance off the tee. Got a couple ideas for you that I think are gonna help you a whole bunch. So, let's get after it. We're using TrackMan. TrackMan has a really cool function called the Optimizer. Now I know that you can't see it, but over here on that TV screen, it's gonna tell me, based on a nice little physics calculation, about how fast my ball's moving, how I deliver the club a little bit to the ball, how I launch the ball, how much spins on the ball, and how high the ball's going. That's gonna tell me when I'm hitting it as good as I can. So given whatever club head speed I'm capable of making, creating, that's what I got. Fair enough? Now, down here, we have a whole bunch of numbers down at the bottom. You guys may have seen these before. We have club speed, attack angle, club path, face angle, ball speed. Ball speed and smash factor are very similar. Notice the 1.4 and the 1.39. That's because at 100 miles an hour, they're close to the same number. Ha -ha. Launch angle, how high to the golf, spin rate, how much backspin's coming on it, how high it is, how far it carried, how far the estimated roll would be on a, on a medium texture fairway. And then you don't have to worry about the side number because I never hit it offline. You think so? Okay, let's go through it. Club speed, how fast can I get this sucker moving? Okay. Now you might not be able to change that very much today. But very soon, you're gonna see another video on the new stack system, it's pretty cool, to develop more speed. Attack angle is whether my club is moving upward, positive, or downward through impact. And I like to tell people that uh, for every degree downward you're hitting, you're probably giving up a uh, five yard penalty on total distance. So we really don't wanna hit down. The ball speed. That is a function of how close to dead flush we hit that golf ball in the face. So we have our trusty spray, foot powder. This is the best one in a yellow can. I guess I can't tell you which kind it is. Here we go, spray. Okay, now we will have some evidence because your feel is not good enough. No offense. Maybe if you're a pro, your feel is very close to good enough. But it's hard to tell where you hit the golf ball relative to the sweet spot and we'll find the ball speed jumps up when I hit it right dead flush, okay? And you also wanna know where that spot was where you come up with the highest ball speed or what's relative to it is the smash factor. Smash factor is the ball speed divided by the club speed. My club speed was 100, ball speed was 139.2, so the smash factor was 1.40. Close enough for jazz folks, okay? Now, how solid you hit it, whether you hit up on or down on, how fast you can swing it, has a lot to do with how far it's gonna go. But you also have a launch angle. What if I'm playing with the wrong lofted driver? I am completely screwed at hitting this high enough. And folks, I know you think if it goes out nice and low and hot, that it's gonna hit and roll forever, but I'm telling you right now, what's gonna stop that ball faster, air or earth? So there's an optimal launch, and Mrs. Trackman's gonna tell us that. Spin rate, if, you got, if your ball's spinning too much, then it's gonna balloon up and stop quicker when it hits the ground. That's just a fact. If it's too low, it's on the ground too soon, as we know, and these things are influencing your carry and your roll. So what do we do? Well, we want to learn how to swing the club faster, and not today, that's not this lesson. This is where you are right now. We want to learn how to hit the golf ball in the middle of the face. First, we're gonna add hitting it with an ascending angle of attack, upward into impact, okay? And we're gonna to try to minimize the spin rate. Those are three things that we can do in the same day. So here we go. Number one, okay, now I'm no longer warmed up, so this might not be 100 miles an hour. 
Ready? Here it comes. Try this at home. I'm just going to make my swing. Hopefully hit it in the middle of the face. Ooh. 1.44 ball speed. Okay, now folks, I'm hoping you can see this one right here. Dig it down to 95 miles an hour. Okay, there is my ball contact. Pretty much right in the middle of that face. Now, interestingly enough, very interestingly enough, with that contact, I got a 1.51 smash factor. That would suggest I hit it slightly toe side of center, which that is barely a dimple side, toe side of dead center. That might say, ooh, your sweet spot on this driver is damn close to where that mark is. Very cool. And we look at it and we go, oh boy, holy cow. All right, the ball speed was super high. I hit that ball way too low. 95 miles an hour, four degrees upward is a delicious thing. Gosh, a face, a path, beautiful. The ball's only 27 feet left of target, 257. It had no spin on it. it had no launch angle. Hmm. I've hit that ball too low. And Trackman says that ball should have carried on 95 miles an hour, should have carried the 237. But it was all too, in fact, the height wise, wasn't even on the chart. How about that? The height wise is 50 feet up. I need to double that height almost. All right, now, I got the attack angle upward. I hit it in the middle of the face. I've got to try to hit the ball higher. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up this way. Well, I'm gonna hit this thing right through the ceiling right here. And wait a minute, but what happens if that persists? That's pretty good contact, folks. I gotta tell you, that's pretty damn good contact. That's gonna tell me I need to loft this driver up. I got it on, it's brand new. I got it on 10.5 degrees loft. I might have to put this baby at 11.5 or 12.5. I don't really care what loft number is. I care what that spin rate, launch angle, height, ball speed, that's what I care about. And by the way, if I had to go down to a a, uh, even lighter shaft, which I have sitting around here. Oh, it's right over there. I might even do that. Different discussion. All right. Ball two. We've got to hit the golf ball higher. All right, Donegan. Let's see what we got. To hit the ball higher, what I might do is I might kind of shift back a little. Henrik Stenson does this. He gets set. You've seen it. He shifts back. Because if I get back this way more, I can launch the ball higher. If I'm on top of the ball more, I'm going to launch it lower. Those are the rules. My main thought, I'm going to stand up like that. I'm going to try to hit it higher up the screen. Okay? I'm looking. If I was outside, I'd be looking at the clouds. All right, Johnny. Let's see what you're made of. Okay. Well, I got that, oh, I missed the whole golf ball, folks. 1.41 smash factor. I hit that one low on the toe. So my ball speed dropped down significantly. However, wait a minute, because I hit it higher by 21 feet, that ball still carried 228, even though it actually went farther, carried farther even though I mishit it because I launched it better. See, this, this is really important that we have all these things together. This is a really, really big deal because well, one of my specialties as, as golf coach is helping people make sense of the nonsense. That one, I didn't hit a solid, but you know, quite a bit. That's three miles an hour ball speed less. That's 10 yards. But because I got it up in the air, I launched it four degrees higher. It was okay. Mmm, cool. All right, more golf. Let's see what we have. What I'm going to do to help me hit up on the golf ball, and one of the reasons for this entire video is I'm going to grab a sleeve of golf balls. 
Okay, hey folks, do me a favor, a real big favor. Take the balls out first. Okay, get those babies out of the way because uh, you might hit this thing. We're gonna place this ball sleeve about a foot ahead of our golf ball. Now in the vortex of my one billion mile an hour golf swing, this thing might get blown over, but if I hit it, that's no good. All right, so about two club heads. Okay, that should be pretty fine. And now if I am swinging up on the golf ball, I should be able, well, hey folks, with this tee, this tee gets moving, the tee might take the thing out, but we'll have to see if that's how it goes. Okay, the, the little yellow tee that this is on, the ball's on, might influence it. This is a great way to work on hitting up. Great way to work on hitting up. Um, you gotta see some of those guys and girls on TV hit the golf ball live, so you see how high this goes. Cameron Champ hits it really low, but he's got six billion miles an hour of club head speed. He used to hit four degrees down his driver hit it this high. But at that speed, you could do whatever you want. Brooks Kepka hits down on his driver, but he's got 124 miles an hour coming speed. You don't, let's just be honest. I don't. If I did, this would not be uh, what we're talking about. You'd be seeing me on TV. Okay, ready? So now, we've got our sprayed face. See where we've hit it. And just so you know, universally, people get better at hitting the middle just by spraying the face and going, huh, didn't know I hit it there, and try again. It's pretty kind of cool. Okay, ooh, yeah, now I know why the balls are not in that sleeve. Okay, done it. Uh, this is a really cool practice for you. I'm gonna go up here and let's bring them up over the golf ball. Okay, yes, up and over. Okay, there we go. Go right up over the golf ball. I, I want you to use the ball, mark it in spot. Sometimes I have people that feel like you're almost gonna hit the ground back here. And come up, okay, here we go. And I'm gonna go most up, try, try to keep that speed around 100 miles an hour or so. Boy, I wish I could go faster. All right, here we go down again. A little load there. Wow. Okay, now I don't know if the T knocked that, that uh, sleeve over, but on that one, I got crazy up on the golf ball, seven degrees upward attack angle. That's a record for me. I didn't know I could do that. Uh, I did miss hit it high on the face, so my ball speed went down. Hey, here's a little trick for you. Lower on the face, add some fade spin. Higher on the face, add some draw spin. Toe side of center, draw spin. Heel side of center, fade spin. That's called gear effect. All right. So now we've got a couple things. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but when I'm trying to hit that ball high, wait a second, one exercise, sleeve drill, second exercise, and the third exercise, one was a setup thing, that's not an exercise, set it back this way, is when I come into this golf ball, I, I can feel my feet almost leave the ground coming into impact. And that's, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna call it, Spiking the ground forces. I'm coming into this golf ball and I'm going into the front shoot and trying to jump up off the ground as I turn. Now, when you get to be like me, if you're getting older, I got back problems, I got one knee problem, I got another knee problem, two shoulder problems, on that I'm just fine. Turning faster is going to become really hard to do as we get older. Can we just be honest with that? A lot of us are gonna lose some of our elasticity in the muscles. That's just part of the deal, sorry. But that doesn't mean that we can't kinda of load up and go forward and jump up to hit that golf ball harder, okay? That last one was 93, so it was really slow. I can live with that. I definitely did something different, and maybe what I did was I hung back too long trying to hit way up in the air so I lose some speed if I hang back on my back foot. I want to feel like I step into a push-up. Right, let's try it again. The load up. I'm gonna try to hit the middle of the face. I am going to push up like crazy on the way down. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Now this is a cool thing. You're gonna see more and more of this on TV. I'm already starting to use the ground. 
right? I'm feeling it in before I even get moving. All right, done again, here we go. Way up, okay, don't hang back. I want you to really push into the ground hard. Oh, by the way, I could give a crap where this ball going right now. I'm trying to launch it up. I want to see my golf. Oh, that last one launched at 17, which is right in the window. Yay. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm getting on to something now. Here we go. Oh, doesn't count. Low face contact, folks. Just so you know, low on the face is going to create low launch because the face is rounded this way. Do you see that? This is called the roll of the face. A bulge here. Roll this way. Darn. That was pretty good. 99 miles an hour. I got no launch. There, by the way, there you go. 31 feet up at almost 100 miles an hour. Attack angle was to die for. Club path fine. Ball sucked. 7 degree launch. No ball speed. It's because I mis hit it. That's okay. Like that, it, wouldn't it be cool if we did the right thing and we always went back to, hmm, what was the contact about the face first? Was it really a bad swing or did I just miss the center? Was the center contact? Hmm. Bad numbers or bad flight, really? Then I did something different. Make sense? What was the contact? What was the takeoff? Was it too high, too low, just right? Too far right, too far left? Just right. And what was the curve? Contact, take off, curve. Yay. Okay, ooh, the thing didn't move. Okay, here we go. I'm getting worn out. So it's fun. All right, time again. So we've got to get, I don't need to hit up, I do not need to hit one millimeter more up on that golf ball. Okay? Like three is a lovely number. I think some of the girls on tour get up to about five, but for me, I do weird stuff to hit five. Okay, so I've got the ball forward. A little load up. I launched that one a little bit higher, folks. Not quite high enough, all, all good. Yep, I gotta get it going higher. I gotta get it going higher. That ball with that strike there, that ball had the potential to go 248. I lost 30 yards. The ball never got up in the air. 10 degree launch. I need to launch that. That was pretty good on the face. I need to launch that way higher. Hey, by the way, did you know that if I launch that golf ball, hit the ball up higher on the face, it'll launch higher with less spin? That's because this face is round. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know if you can. I put this face on there. See that loft change along the face? And it goes this way as well. Right, that face angle is changing because it's round, folks. It's round. The dang thing is round. That's because the engineers who built this thing are geniuses. They know. Low phase contact is going to spin a lot, generally, and rise up. So they put you less loft down there. They know that high phase contact is going to launch higher, but take some spin off. Excuse me. Spin off, so they get it to launch higher by rounding the face. They know that a toe ball is going to want a hook, so they round the face to start the ball right first. They know that a heel ball is going to want a slice. So they round the face so it takes off left before it slices. They're really, they're on our side, trust me. Uh, I have a couple of uh, en engineers that are friends of mine. They are trying like heck to help us. All right, here we go. So Dunnigan, all right, that ball speed was not horrible, but we, we can do better than that. And yep, I'm definitely wearing out the toe side of the club. Alright, a little bit. I have no heel strikes yet. Didn't feel one either, by the way. Every time I get into driver, by the way, it sounds different. Where did you find the sweet spot? This one is sounding pretty good wherever I hit it, which I'll have to get used to it. Okay, here we go. So we're going to try to hit this one a little bit more on center. How? I don't know. I'm just going to ask for it. And keep this thing going high, down again. Okay, 
that was high on the face. Oh, I launched that one. I, oh, my goodness. So I hit that one way up here. Oh, that's a thing of beauty right there, folks. Way up high on the face right there. And I still kept my attack angle upward. My club hand is still money. Face angle beautiful. 1.47 smash factor. That says I hit it pretty damn close. Spun a little bit more. Went 230 in the air. Hmm, but it didn't go anywhere when it hit the ground. I got uh, 16 yards. Oh, the spin was a little bit much. All right, all right, all right. Spin loft, okay. Yeah, I might have hit that. That might be just playing too high on the face. Went 246 total out of the possible 259. All right, we're learning. Okay, here we go. Hard as I can hit it. Load up. I'm gonna let this left heel rise, and I'm going to try to jump up in the ceiling, hit this ball side, so try to give you a, if I get to 105 miles an hour, call an ambulance. Here we go. Ball's a little further back in the stance. Let's do it. I did hit that pretty darn high low spin. 266 out of 270 total. All right, that's good, 240. And by the way, you're seeing just how hard, for those of you who think you hit the golf ball 280 all the time, you may be full as you know what. Because I hit that ball 100 miles an hour with anybody over the age of 50 that's swinging 100 miles an hour is doing great by me. Okay, uh, ball speed is good. Okay, not bad. All right, could be better, but not bad. Height was up, carry was up, that's good. Uh, we're doing okay there. You can see that with the ball more back in the stance, my path went more out to the right. I still kept it up, so I must have got up real easy. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show you one of these. This time, not only am I gonna wind up, I'm gonna get my hands as far away from that golf ball as I can. Right, as far up in the air as I can, and see if that gives me more time with which to apply the force I'm capable of applying today. Because I, I got news for you. I'm breathing heavy. I'm hitting these golf balls as hard as I can. Don't ask me how that golf ball went down the fairway. It's 30 feet to the right. All right. But I don't care. If I'm going to work on speed or launch, I'm going to work on those. And I'm just going to, that's one thing. Work on what you're working on and evaluate what you're working on. Don't evaluate what you're not working on. Okay. All right, normal ball location. Up there, way up in the stance. We've got to get this thing. Oh my goodness, we're going to get up here. Oh, baby. Let's see what happens, right? Here we go. All right, Jonathan, come on. Show the folks what you're made of. 105. slower. Well, folks, that may be a sign from God. I may, and I am hitting the ball, but when I hit my driver, oh, I hit the optimizer. Yay! 264. Only 98. I thought I'd be to 105. Didn't do it. But I got the ball launched high. Right? Spin rate, 25.8. Beautiful. Launch angle, 12. Ball speed, 146. Yippee skippy. And the ball went up in the air high enough. Now I know I hit that again. I hit that one right over the center. You gotta do these things for me. You gotta check this out. If you do nothing else for me, spray that damn face. Number two, try that, miss the box. You might have seen that in Golf Magazine uh, last year, I think it was in there. Chris Como put it on this show. That was very cool, give you a nice shout out. Then get the idea of we're going to load up here and we're going to hit up on that golf ball, like a top spin forehand in tennis. Too many folks are hitting a slice forehand in tennis. It's horrible for golf. You want to think you're hitting a top spin forehand, right? Up on the ball. And you're going to have a whole lot more fun. When you do this, don't forget to go back. Look at the grip. Your grip is killing you video, right? 
get on some technology. I don't care if you have to rent space for $100 an hour. If you could just find out what you really are doing relative to what you think you're doing, you can go a long way. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks and hit them great.